We're going to take a break. Back to talk about Myanmar civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi and uh, an effort by a local former Carleton University student to have her Canadian citizenship revoked. Stay with us. If it's happening in your neighborhood, it's happening in hers. Share your thoughts on Twitter at Meehan Carol Ann. The Carol Ann Meehan Show on 1310 News. Welcome back. A former Carleton University student has begun a petition asking that the government revoke the honorary citizenship of Aung San Suu Kyi, the de facto leader of Myanmar. Um, a lot of people really disturbed that this de facto leader has been remaining silent on what many people see as, as a genocide in her country. Uh, Rohingya Muslims being forced to, to leave the country. She has been basically silent on what's been going on until today. She did make a speech, but a lot of people are very unhappy about what she didn't say. In fact, what she did say. What she said is that she insisted her country has not is not afraid of, afraid of national security. Farid Khan is the organizer of the petition asking our government to revoke her citizenship. He joins me now. Farid, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Did you follow what uh, Aung San Suu Kyi said today? Yes, I, uh, I read the reports uh, about uh, what she said during her speech. And your reaction? Um, well, it's uh, totally inadequate. Her, her, this is her first comment on what's happening to the Rohingya. And uh, the speech said nothing about the atrocities being committed by the Myanmar military against the Rohingya and failed absolutely in addressing the issue of the humanitarian crisis that has been created as a result of the ethnic cleansing, which she and uh, her country's military are dis- directly responsible for. What do and you think is going on? Like, we, we, we kind of looked at this woman as basically a saint, you know. She's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. She was pro-democracy. And now she seems to, ha- she's taken on a different persona. You know what, Caroline? I wish I knew. I wish, like all the people who had supported her, uh, knew. Um, Amnesty International was a, um, uh, you know, uh, made a huge effort to try and get her release when she was under house arrest, and uh, they are, uh, you know, they are saying that uh, she is overseeing a genocide. Uh, they have uh, responded that, um, you know, similar to what I think a lot of other. Uh, leaders are saying is that, uh, you know, the response uh, in her speech today was totally inadequate. And certainly Canadians are coming out in droves, not only on social media, but they're coming out in demonstrations. And I've now got almost, uh, you know, reaching up to 32,000 supporters of my petition, which are calling not only to have the Canadian government revoke her honorary citizenship, but also calling on the Canadian government to take concrete action um, that will help lives, save lives on the ground. Because every day we delay, people are being killed, mm-hmm. children are being brutally murdered, women are being raped. And this, this is like the horror stories that are coming out. We haven't seen, uh, heard of things like this since, you know, since uh, Rwanda genocide. So, um, it's just horrific, and uh, I and hundreds of thousands of other Canadians want the Canadian government to take action in a very concrete way, not just in a symbolic way. It's uh, almost infuriating. She said today that the government needs more time to investigate what's happening. Yeah, I think she's living in a fantasy land. Um, she, you know, and, and not only that, but she has even come out in support of the military in a few of her statements, which, uh, you know, in itself, I think, demonstrates the sort of mindset that uh, she now has. She is not the icon of freedom, democracy, human protection of human rights and rule of law that, uh, you know, she was once seen as. She is not the person who received that uh, Nobel Peace Prize back in 1991 and she's certainly not the person that Canada conferred an honorary citizenship to. Could she be in um, a a real corner? I mean, she is the de facto leader, but in fact, the military is uh, the majority, is is the majority, uh, but they're the majority in that country. Well, they're the power. Yes, the the power. But could they could they be putting um, pressure on her to, to stay quiet? You know, that might be the case, but the thing is, she now, as a national leader, and as a, you know, as an icon on the world stage, she has a voice, and the thing is, if she came out, if she had come out, you know, 
weeks ago, years ago, when, when the Pope and the Dalai Lama called on her to say something, if she had come out and said something at that point, I think the world would have flocked to her support. Um, you would have had, you know, all those people who had supported her, who had worked to free her, would have come out to her support, and I think it would have been... Um, it would have been very dangerous at that time for the military to, you know, then, you know, sanction her in any way. Now, the longer she has waited, the worse the situation has got. The brutality of what is happening to the Rohingya is just, you know, un- unfathomable to, to most Canadians. And um, uh, she now has to come out and say something. And what she said today was totally uh, inadequate, uh, you know, in response to what she's been called upon um, and, and how she's been called upon to react to what's been happening. So, um, I, you know, it makes me wonder, what is the conversation that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau mm-hmm. had with her when he spoke with her? Um, uh, was it uh, last week? Yeah. Uh, well, he said he put pressure on her to do something. Uh, obviously, that hasn't made any impact. I, I'm just reading here that the U.S. officials uh Rex Tillerson has spoken by phone to Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, and he's asking actually that uh, that she grant uh, access to U.S. monitors uh, mm-hmm. to go in there. No word on whether she will allow that. Yes, and, and you see, that's, that's the thing. Right now, they have to allow monitors in. However, there is a protocol under the United Nations. It's called Responsibility to Protect. It was signed after what happened to the uh, uh, the Kosovo, the Kosovars in in the Balkans War towards the end of the 90s, and Canada was involved in this in the 2000s to to uh, create this protocol, which basically calls upon uh, the international community to intervene in a nation when that nation's uh, government or you know forces are involved mm-hmm. in in killing their own people, and this is one of those situations that uh, requires the international community to. Uh, use that protocol to basically go in, uh, protect the uh, Rohingya who are still alive, and create a safe haven for them. Because the other thing is that, you know, they don't have citizenship in the country that they have lived in for, for, you know, centuries. That citizenship was uh, withdrawn back, I believe it was in the uh, 80s when the military took over. And uh, ever since Aung San Suu Kyi became um, the leader, she has not made any effort to reinstate reinstitute the citizenship on the Rohingya. So they are basically non-persons in that mm-hmm. country. And in fact, their, uh, their country didn't even count them in their latest census. So basically, they disappeared. A million or so people disappeared off the census in, in, in the latest census in that country. That's, that's the mentality that we are seeing. They, they don't even want to see them as human beings, as people to be counted. Farid, you've taken this on to get the government to rescind her, to withdraw her citizenship. Why? What, why, why you? I've been following, I've been active in various social justice issues for years, and, and I think like a lot of Canadians, you know, um, we, we work within certain communities, we, you know, use email, we've tried to raise awareness on social media, and, you know, through our own immediate circles, but on this one, I've been following the Rohingya issue for years, and I kept on wondering, you know, why isn't somebody doing something, why aren't governments reacting, and every time, you know, this issue popped up in the media about the persecution over the last uh, in decade, and then finally I said, you know what, I can't be, you know, as a Canadian, I just can't sit here and not do anything, I need to do something, and I need to call on my government, which preferred this on, conferred this honor on her, to take some concrete action. So I decided to create the petition on uh, on the ch- platform change.org, and it received, like it, it started receiving hits very quickly, and now we're approaching 32,000 signatures. Um, we've had demonstrations across the country where this has come up. The issue of revoking her citizenship is is something that people react to because it's something that's easy to do. It's a political decision, but it sends a very strong signal. It's a symbolic act that sends a strong signal, not just to Canadians, but to the international community that Canada is willing to take action. And that symbolic act needs to be followed up with actual um, on the ground act, actions with Canada working through the United Nations to do things like impose an arms embargo on Myanmar, work with international partners to bring the perpetrators of the crimes against humanity and genocide to justice, and to work with agent, uh, international agencies and allies to respond to the humanitarian crisis because you know, almost half a million Rohingya have fled just recently uh, Myanmar, and they've gone into Bangladesh, another impoverished country, which just doesn't have yeah. the means to deal with such a humanitarian um, uh, crisis. Fareed, uh, just briefly, I'm running out of time. When do you sit, put this toward the Prime Minister, this petition? 
Well, we've been, uh, I've been waiting until Parliament comes back, which came back this week. So now I'm talking with uh, the people uh, who I've been working with and uh, also the uh, um, people at Change.org to actually uh, do some sort of a uh, public presentation where the uh, physical petition can be presented to MPs who can then present it in the House of Commons uh, so that the government can react. And I'm hoping to have that hopefully before the end of September. Okay. And again, if people want to sign it, it is change.org yes, change.org and the petition is sponsored under my name my name is attached to it for reed khan so uh, that's the petition that you want to uh, add your name to and i i encourage all listeners who are uh listening to your show to please go uh, because we need to take action that's more concrete than just expressing concern and putting you know mm-hmm. pressure by phone calls on okay. to the uh on to Aung san Suu Kyi. Uh, our, our government has a connection and we need to do a lot more Fareed Khan, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline. Okay. Okay. Fareed Khan, change.org, folks. Simple as that. Sign the petition. We can get it up there into, it's 30, over 30,000 now. Let's see uh, if we can get up to 50. Uh, it's the least that we can do.